going to talk about Angular 2 forms and validation. That there are basically two ways to do forms in Angular 2. You can do template driven or you can do model driven. So here is our continuum of creating forms from template driven to model driven. And as you might guess, template driven, all the stuff is in the template. So when we create our forms, our input elements, our data binding, our validation, our error messages, all in the template itself. And there are two basic things that we want to do in our validation. One, we want to display some kind of message telling the user that something went wrong. And the second thing is we want to provide some kind of visual indication that something went wrong. So how do we do that? Well, here I'm just adding a, a set of spans and I'm using an ng if. And here I'm using title.touched and title.errors. So where is that title coming from? That's that local, local template variable that we just defined. The second part of it was to color our text, so we wanted to color it all red so we could have a div around our label and our input box and these spans. And we're again using title there, which is that local template variable that references the control in the ng form. So when we're doing template driven, you might have noticed that it's very similar to Angular 1. It uses ng model for the data binding, so we don't have to worry about setting a default or tracking what the values are. And we're using ng control bound to the control name. Our validation and error messages are in the form. So let's take a little step to the right and uh, look at partially model-driven forms. We're still going to have our input elements. We're going to keep our data binding, so we'll still have our defaults and such. And we're going to keep our error messages also in the template. So that will make it easier uh, for us because Angular will take care of displaying the correct error messages. But what we're going to move over to the class is we're going to define our controls, we're going to define our form, and we're going to define the validation in the class. So there is no form object per se in Angular. Instead, it's a control group. And any group of controls can be a control group. And you can have a control group within a control group. So we could have like an address block that we tracked separately from the overall form and so on. Our controls then are declared as of type control. So when we take our little step to the right, we're using the new form builder. We're still using ng model so that we don't have to have a default value. We don't have to manage any of that. We're using ng control to bind between our template and our code. Our validation is now in the class, but our messages are still in the HTML. Now, why would we want to do this? Why would we want to put more code in our class? Well, one big reason, of course, is unit testing, because we would be able to unit test it. Another good reason, though, is we can add logic to it. Now we're ready to take the next big step over to model-driven. So in the model driven, we're going to put pretty much everything in the class. We're going to define the control, the form. We're going to handle our own default values, validation, error messages, everything. In the template then, all we will have is our input elements, and we're going to have that ng control binding, so which is going to associate the element in the template with the actual control that we've defined in the component class. As soon as we go to fully model driven, we no longer use ng model. And as soon as we no longer use ng model, then we need to provide a default. We need to handle changes and keep track of when to display validation messages. Thank you so much for hanging in with me this afternoon. Thanks. Thanks.